All right, good. So we are recording. All right, welcome everybody. We are doing uh, designing a landing page on Elementor SEO versus SEM. It's March 10th. March. All right. Uh, the meetup today is going to be two hours long. So let's keep it personal. Please uh, use your video when you're speaking. But if you could, please mute your microphone so that uh, the speaker is not interrupted. We will take some time for questions. Tyler will let you know how that will work, whether we do it throughout or afterwards. Uh, but just note that this is being recorded and it will be shared on the Elementor YouTube channel afterward. So if you don't want your picture on there, just uh, kindly please turn off your camera. All right. Um, don't forget to join the Elementor Chicago Slack group. I'll put the link out there again in the chat. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, that's where we kind of converse throughout the month uh, when we're not here. So you can share links and ask for advice and all types of things. So that's all there. Let me let these people in the room real quick. All right, there we go. All right, so today we are going to have our presenter is going to be Tyler LaChapelle. Hope I got that right. From Digitally Optimized <laughs> Systems to Marketing. Uh, let me grab your uh, thing over here. All right, Tyler is a jack of all trades, master of some because of how much time he spends learning new skill sets. So he's a He's a learner like me. That's, I do that too. I'm learning everything. This has come in handy in the digital age as we live in because there are so many avenues to specialize in. And his expertise is in virtual systems, data interpretation, and digital advertising. His career has been in marketing for the past nine years. Tyler started as a market research and web developer in college. Afterward, he moved to Denver for an SEO, SEM manager position, which developed him into becoming a digital marketing director for an agency. Most recently, he started an agency that specializes in digital optimizations called Digitally Optimized Systems to Marketing. This is a new approach to marketing that optimizes the user experience as well as the management experience. So you can find Tyler for his hobbies twice a week hiking um, with his pup Sky. He also spends most of his time enjoying art, music and cooking just about anything that makes life a little bit more interesting. So please welcome Tyler. Tyler, I'm going to give you the screen here. I'll stop sharing and you should be able to. Awesome. Do thank you, Mike. And yeah, like, first things first, I just want to say thank you for letting me present here. Um, this meetup group has been fantastic. I feel like I've gotten a golden nugget out of every presentation for like the last several months. So <laughs> truly, it's an honor to be able to speak here. So round of applause for this group. Um, I truly think it's an amazing Elementor meetup group that I've been a part of. So just Thanks, wanted Tyler. to say that before Thank anything you. else. I do have a couple other disclaimers. So the biggest complaint that I get when I'm doing presentations is that I speak a little bit too fast and that's because I'm nervous. But the good thing is, is that this is gonna be recorded. So if I'm going too fast for you, feel free to go look back at that video and play it in 0.5 speed. Um, secondly, is if anyone's playing interested in playing a drinking game tonight, if I say these words you drink, optimize, friction, user experience, low-hanging fruit, or balancing act. Um, so yeah, let's begin. Uh, thank, thank you for the introduction as well. Uh, just a little bit more background about myself is I went to college. I got a scholarship at Hawaii Pacific University to study surfing, I, I mean marketing, um, a few years ago. And that's what like got me kicked off into this industry. Uh, it's something that I've always been interested in. I've always had a variety of careers in it. And my career has just grown as a digital marketer uh, since I've started. Um, with that being said, now I currently do digital optimizations for creative entrepreneurs. Like I work with painters, tattoo artists, caterers, travel, uh, tra blog, travel blogs, and photographers. Um, pretty much I just love helping creative businesses, helping them succeed in this digital age just because there's so much to do. There's so much behind the scenes that needs to get done, and that's what I specialize in. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're tackling a lot tonight. So we're going to be talking about landing pages, SEO, SEM, and optimizing these uh, landing pages. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. Personally, I'm not a fan of like PowerPoints and presentations like that. Uh, so I did a, something a little bit different. So since we're going to be talking about landing pages, I built a landing page uh, as an example of what this is. So what is a landing page? Um, a landing page is essentially a place that you send people to on your website 
in, for a specific goal that you want completed. And the best example of this is for my own business, what I want is contact information. I want leads. I want people interested in my services. So most of the landing pages that I build are to collect their contact information. Um, but this is can be used in like a variety of different aspects. Um, a good one is like events. Like if you're hosting an event, a landing page is a perfect uh, kind of option to get that event out there, provide information for it and get more details. Oh, sorry, let me go back a little bit. I forgot to address questions. Feel free to put your questions in the chat and then I have times um, at the end that we'll go through them all. I really wanna make sure that there's enough time for questions just because I feel like there's gonna be a lot of information for all uh, types of uh, like what your knowledge is. Um, so I wanna make sure everyone's question is answered, uh, but we'll save it till later. Uh, but back to this. So another example is like a, a homepage, but that's not a true landing page. A homepage is just what is it, like puts a good clear picture of what a landing page is supposed to be. Um, it's a place that you send people to, uh, it, it helps provide like a certain pathway that you want to take for an experience on your website. And the whole goal of a landing page is to reduce as much friction as possible. A landing page is supposed to be something where the user is getting the information that they want and they don't have to search for it. Um, so we're gonna be talking about optimizations in a little bit, but first let's go into SEO and SEM. So what are SEO and SEM? SEO stands for search engine optimization and SEM stands for search engine marketing. SEO for, and both of these things are when you're searching something on Google. So for an example, you could be searching, let's see, pet food. Uh, and then when you search pet food, there's gonna be all these things that pull up on the Google search results, the SERP, and that's where the difference is. Uh, SEM typically is what appears first, and these are paid ads. This is something that people are putting money behind to make sure that their advertisements are appearing at the top of the page. They do also appear at the bottom of the page. Uh, then typically what comes next is usually like a excerpt from Google um, for a lot of uh, searches on the web, like Google will provide details about that search. Um, and if there is no excerpt, then what comes is the organic listings. And this is what we're most familiar with. Whenever you search something, there's just always organic listings. And something funny that I heard once was, uh, if you, if you wanna hide a dead body, you hide it on the second page of Google because no one's ever gonna go there. Everyone stays on the first page of Google just because there's enough uh, read, readily, inf, uh, readily important information on it. So the first page is like the most important page. That's why people are paying money to make sure they're shown at the top of it. And then SEO is a really big strategy. It's something that you hear a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, and I'll try and touch on all these little details that go into SEO further into this presentation. Um, but the big thing when it comes to comparing SEO and SEM is it's a balancing act between the two. And when I say it's a balancing act is when it comes to web design, you're constantly balancing the aesthetics of it as well as the functionality of it. Um, and a good example I can give is Apple, apple.com. And I was just looking at their website earlier. So let me go move over to their website. So when you're searching for an Apple MacBook Pro, Here's like a perfect example of the SEM and SEO results. Right here is an ad and that's the SEM. Another word for SEM is PPC, pay per click. So something like even social media advertisements could fall under this idea of like paid advertising for landing pages where you're paying to get that traffic to the landing page. But here is the SEO result for the MacBook Pro. And when you click this, you will be taken, well, there's kind of, two, there's a bunch of different options. If you click this one or this one, you get taken to this page. And this page, they're putting an emphasis on the functionality of this page because this is what they want to rank organically. And when you're taking a look at this page, what you'll notice is that all the content is pretty much static. There's nothing fancy going on here. It's here to provide the information that you're searching for, and then it'll take you something else. Uh, if you click specifically MacBook Pro 16 inch, well, then you get taken to this page and this page is a lot more fancier. This is really putting the emphasis on uh, the aesthetics uh, because I mean, they're Apple. They want to be that company that's like cool, modern, but like, as you can see, as I'm scrolling through this, like the page is not functional. It's having like these weird kind of like glips, errors, bugs, popping up through it. When I was talking about this on a podcast one day, we went to go look at this and like the page was taking forever to load. So this is like a perfect example of like how 
Apple themselves are balancing functionality and the aesthetics on their own website. And like, you can even take a look at like their homepage. Like the homepage is the most important page when it comes to organic rankings on the web. So this one isn't fancy either. This one is putting all the emphasis on the functionality of this page to make sure that it ranks properly in Google. Um, and, and there's like a, like I said, a bunch of things that go into SEO and we'll touch on that in a little bit. Uh, but back to this, where'd it go? So SEO functionality comes first. Um, and when I say like functionality, the biggest things are like page speed that has a huge factor into like how your organic rankings are. Google doesn't want to recommend a website that takes like 10 seconds to load. So your page speed is super important. Uh, the other thing is like keyword relevancy. So there's these things on the on the web called keywords. Uh, and these are like what people are searching. The case of like the map Apple one is MacBook Pro was the keyword that I was searching. And this can be relevant to anything. There, there's, a key, there's thousands of keywords there's long tail keywords, there's short keywords. Um, and then you can build landing pages around these keywords. If I was to choose a keyword for this landing page, I'd probably choose building a landing page. That would be the keyword that I would be using for this page itself. Um, the other thing is mobile optimization. Like you'll see here, I have all these kind of little screenshots of mobile devices. And that's to remind me of how important mobile is. We live in the age where it's mobile first. So, I mean, most of us are on a computer right now. Most of us are on a desktop and we probably forget this a lot of the time since we're always sitting in front of our computers. But the reality is, is everyone's on their phone. So if your website doesn't work on mobile, it's like essentially a waste of a website. So this is super important to keep in mind. Um, and that's something big that's happening with the newest uh, Google algorithm update is how they're prioritizing organic listings is if they work on mobile. So if your site doesn't work on mobile, you're gonna disappear from the uh, mobile search, or search results. The other thing when it comes to SEO is, like I said, it's all based off this keyword relevancy. So everything is keyword focused. So the whole structure of the landing page is designed around this keyword that you're building. So for in the case of this one, building the landing page is the keyword. I would need to put this keyword all throughout the copy, all throughout the alt text of all these images. And the whole strategy behind it all is all around this specific keyword. And because of like all these factors that go into SEO, um, it, it, it's a very much a long-term strategy. It's not something that you're gonna get instantaneous results from. You need to play this for like at least three months before you start seeing any kind of legitimate traffic. Um, and, and most like well done SEO campaigns will take like up to a year to see fruition from them. So the pages that you're designing for SEO, these are relatively static. Like you're not making changes to them frequently. Like they're there, you've got the work done and you're waiting for it to rank organically. And then you're doing all of these other things. So what I talked about right here is on page optimizations. And then there's all these things that are called like off page optimizations that play into SEO. There's something called uh, domain authority. So how I like to use an example of domain authority is like essentially uh, the search results are like one big popularity contest and Google wants to recommend the most popular websites. Uh, so how they do this is there's like, what I was saying is domain authority assigned to a website. And that's essentially how popular your website is. So something like Facebook or CNBC or Apple, they have really high domain authority because they're extremely popular websites. Like they're up there in like a score out of hundred, they're like in the 80 to hundred range. When you start off a website, you're at zero. So you need other popular websites to be referring to your site, linking to it. And that's something called backlinks. And backlinks play a huge part into your SEO. So content is one part of it. And that's the on-page optimizations to that content. And then there's all this other stuff behind the scenes, like these backlinks or something else is called like citations. And this is more relevant to like locally based businesses more so than something like global. Um, and citations are just an, another form of backlinking where it's specifically tied to your business name, your address, your phone number. And this is how Google determines that you are who you say you are. And these are all these things that play into something like SEO. SEM or pay-per-click, I'm going to probably say pay-per-click more than SEM. It was just for like a title, SEO versus SEM sounded better than SEO versus PPC. Um, so when it comes to SEM, I like to say that aesthetics come first for this. I mean, functionality is still very important. Like if you put an entire emphasis on aesthetics and your page speed is taking forever to load, well, it's just not going to work out. 
Um, so there still needs to be some functionality when you're when you're keeping this in mind when you're building a landing page for SEM. Um, and, and this is a perfect example. Like this page, it's a little bit more aesthetically based than something else. Uh, you can see like I have entrance animations going on and at the bottom there's this funky thing that I got going on just to capture people's attention. Uh, I'm putting an emphasis on the aesthetics for this one because I'm doing a presentation. There's very little SEO that I put into this page and it's not something I'm trying to get to rank on the web. This one is mainly focused as if it was like a pay-per-click uh, style landing page. And when it comes to a, a, a pay-per-click, a landing page, it's very conversion focused rather than keyword focus. And the reason for this is if you're putting money behind something, you want to see a return on investment. So the whole strategy and approach to the landing page is different than SEO is because you're mainly focused on just capturing that information. So you're doing everything within your possibilities as a web developer to make sure that you're getting as many conversions as possible. I mean, this is still something you want when it comes to SEO, but again, you're still prioritizing that keyword above conversions. Um, typically though, I like to do a little bit of both. Like I said, it's a balancing act. So I like to have like a pretty even um, distribution when I'm doing these landing pages. And the best example I can give is when I'm working with like painting contractors, they have all these different services. Like they do interior painting, they do exterior painting, they do cabinet painting. And these are all landing pages that I want designed for SEO as well as SEM. So although I am focusing on the keyword, I'm still just as much focused on the conversion. And I tend to sacrifice my SEO a little bit more for these conversions, just because that's my biggest, that's the goal that I have. So every landing page that you're building, you have to first think about what's your goal? What do you want from this landing page? And then you kind of work backwards a little bit to get there. And when it comes to like pay-per-click um, and landing pages built for like social media marketing and stuff like that, or like an event, these are like short-term. They're not there for like the long-term. Um, you can change them as needed. They're, they're mainly looking for something like instantaneous. And then when you have like these landing pages built for SEO or SEM, you're not done. Like you've only done half the battle there. The second part is optimizing these landing pages. Um, how I like to describe it is like, if you visit a house you can like tell if no one's been in that house compared to if someone's actively living there. And the same holds true for websites. Like you can tell when someone is like just left a website to do its thing on its own. And then you can also tell when there's actually like someone behind it, making sure that the website is functioning properly. Um, so, so how do you optimize these landing pages? Uh, the first things first is with data. Like data is like the best way to optimize a landing page. So the most popular way of doing landing page optimizations or looking at data is with like Google Analytics. Um, and we had a great presentation last week with someone who was talking about SEO and Google Analytics. So I'm not going to go dive too deep into this, um, but we'll touch on it in a little bit. Uh, another good useful tool for data is to make sure that you have your Facebook pixel installed on your website. And, and the reason why I say this, like I personally don't look too much at my Facebook pixel, but I'll notice that people who are a little bit in like a beginning stage and they're, they're not too familiar with like web stuff, I, I notice that they'll have a Facebook pixel installed before Google Analytics. And as long as you're getting data, like I'm happy to see that. It might not be the best. I'd prioritize Google Analytics over Facebook pixel, but just having data is going to help you out for the long run. And one of the biggest recommendations I'll have with like clients and stuff like that, when I'm like doing an audit or something is like, if I, if they're not collecting data, that's like one of the first things I recommend. And the thing that I tell them is that even if you do nothing with this data right this second, it will help you out further down the line. Like you're going to be thinking thanking yourself like a year from now, six months from now that you started collecting this data and then you can make optimizations with it. So if you want to get a little golden nugget, make sure you're collecting your data, but also make sure you're collecting your data correctly. This is one of the biggest things I see. And it's so sad because like it, it, you're collecting the data, you're doing your due diligence, but like I'll see Google analytics tags that are installed properly or there's double tags installed. So they're, they're tracking the data incorrectly. So you always want to make sure that when you have these like data collections uh, that you're tracking it properly. So use the tag assistant or the pixel helper to help you get there. Um, next is like user feedback. Like there's nothing like sure data might reign supreme, but there's nothing better than seeing someone interact with your landing pages right before your very eyes. The old way I would do this is like when I built a landing page, I would like go to one of my coworkers. I would go like talk to my parents. I'd go talk to a friend and then I'd like pull up my phone or I'd ask to see their phone and pull up the landing page. And then I'd be like, 
interact with it as if you're interested in this service or this product. And then I'd be right over their shoulder and I'd be watching what they do because how you expect someone to interact with your landing pages is very different than what they actually do. They'll be clicking all these random things that you didn't think that they would click. They like interact with things, not how you thought they would. And it just, it, it's honestly shocking at first. So what I like to do is make sure that you can track how people interact with these. So get user testing feedback. And there's this really cool tool that I use called Microsoft Clarity that helps you do this. And we'll, I'll be doing live demonstrations after this kind of speaking part. We'll all show you all this stuff. And what Microsoft Clarity does is it records the session. So that way you can see how people are scrolling through your site, what they're clicking on, how they're interacting it, where they leave. And that is like this, it's even better than asking a friend or a parent or, or relative to do it because it's actually people interested in that service or product. So you get a true sense of like how that landing page is performing. Um, another thing too is like, typically we have landing pages that we build for a variety of marketing campaigns, like traditional marketing campaigns. Like if you're going to send out postcards, you're going to do a radio advertisement or a podcast advertisement, because that's a little bit more relevant nowadays. So there's like all these different things that you can send people to a landing page with. So it's important to custom track these um, campaigns and you can use a campaign URL builder. And this will integrate with your Google analytics. So that way you can see uh, where people are coming from. So a good example of this is like on my business card, let's see if this will focus on my business card, there's a QR code at the top. And that's the only link that I have to my website on my business card. And the reason for that is because I have a custom tracking URL that lets me know in my analytics, who's coming to my website from a business card. And I have these for a variety of things. So one of these other custom tracking URLs is this landing page itself. So I'll send it in the chat right now. Chicago.dos-m.com. And that'll take you to my landing page. But what you'll notice is that here at the top in the URL, it's not actually that URL I sent you. What I'm doing is a URL redirection with this custom tracking URL in it. So the actual URL of the page is my website slash building a landing page. And then here's the custom tracking URL portion to it. So that way I can see who's coming to this landing page from the Chicago uh, meetup presentation. And I did a test run of this presentation in a meetup that I host for New England creative entrepreneurs. So I had a different tracking code that I sent out in that one. So I can see who's interacting from that. And any future presentation I'll do, I'll build custom URLs to help me know who is visiting this site from which presentation I was doing it at. Um, and, and that just helps me know what marketing efforts are performing the best because there's nothing worse than thinking something is working from one thing, but it's actually another thing. Um, the other thing too with landing pages, and this is also like almost as important as like data interpretation is A-B testing. Like this is, this is what you want to do with a landing page. You want to send this to like, you want to dis distribute how people are interacting with it because little tweaks that you might make can have like a significant impact on how that landing page performs. For example, an A-B test that I might do here is, hmm, let's see. I might change out like the colors here. Like I'm not, I wasn't particularly stoked about this black that I was using here on this, uh, on this part of the landing page. I was using an Elementor template. So I figured I'd keep it as simple as possible, hence the black, uh, but I don't think it was the best color choice. So an example of an A-B test I could do is changing out all the colors and then seeing if that gets better interaction on the page, or maybe something else that I'll do is instead of looking for help and schedule a discovery call, I'll say, let's get in contact. And instead of scheduled discovery call, it'll say, um, uh, contact form or something else. So that way I can see what's leading to the most conversions. Because again, like the biggest focus that I have is conversions. I wanna make sure that these landing pages are working. And if you're gonna be doing these A-B tests, Google Optimize is a great resource to help get these done. In the past, like I would be stupid and have like one page that I would send half or what I thought was half of like the traffic to with one Google AdWords campaign that I built. And then I'd build another Google AdWords campaign that would send them to another landing page that I built. So that way I could get these A-B tests done. But Google Optimize keeps it super simple. It's all in one place. It's got data in it. It's awesome. Um, and then the last kind of tool that you can use for optimizing landing pages is CRM integrations. And not every CRM is the same. And a CRM is a customer 
customer relationship management tool. Um, and essentially that's a fancy way of saying something that keeps track of your customers. And I really like having a CRM that integrates with my website because as much as I love looking at data and I like, like looking at what converts, none of that actually tells me who's a customer. So when I integrate my HubSpot account with my websites, I'm able to see who's actually a customer. And then I can go look through like their history of what they were doing on the page to see what actually led to someone being a customer of mine and not just the lead. Um, and that's why I like having a CRM integration in it. Um, and then here, all this stuff at the bottom of the page, like this is just for you guys. If you want to schedule a discovery call, feel free to. Here's a couple of blogs I wrote related to landing pages. It's like a three-part series. Um, let's actually get into some like live demonstrations of all this stuff that I was just talking about because I feel like that's what's most beneficial. So let me get back to over here. So we talked about Apple, all that jazz. Um, keywords. So like this is where you're going to start for any landing page that you're building, whether it's SEO or SEM, both are based around keywords. So typically when I'm doing keyword research, I start here with the Google Ads Keyword Planner. And this is something that you can get for free just by having a Google AdWords account. However, you're not gonna get as much detail as you'll see when I'm doing this demonstration, uh, just because Google provides more data based on like if you're actually spending money with them. Um, there's a bunch of other like free tools out there, but there hasn't been anything as good as Keyword Planner because I'm specifically like looking at certain areas. So let's do an example. Like uh, I need to get a haircut soon. It's been a while. It's been a full year since I've gotten a haircut. So let's look at, uh, I'm not gonna search haircut. I'm gonna search uh, hair salon because I don't like barbers. They cut my hair too, too short. I go to salons. So hair salon. And then typically when people are searching services, almost always they're searching near me at the end of it. So we're just gonna start here and let's see. And I'm pretending as if I was actually a, like a hair salon. Like that's why I'm doing this. I'm not gonna do this like, <laughs> I have no interest in like knowing the actual keyword information about it, but we're just gonna pretend that this is in my like area. So let's say I own a hair salon and I am in Boston. So we're gonna choose a specific location. And that's what I love about the keyword planner is that you get to see data based off certain areas. And this helps me out all the time because most of my clientele are very localized service-based businesses. Like most of my clients are like tattoo artists. So they're only serving like a radius around their shop. And I'm also working with like painting contractors and they only like typically stay in like a section of their state. So let's say I'm in Boston. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can go about it. So you could choose like the county. Uh, the keyword planner has this neat feature called regions. So let's choose that. And that's a little too large. Like someone from New Hampshire isn't going to drive down to Boston to get a haircut. So let's, let's re refine that a little bit. So let's just do Boston, Massachusetts. There. That's a little bit better. Not ideal. I'd probably use a county for this instead, but I can't remember the county off the top of my head. So let's start there. And what this does is this provides all the data that I need to see regarding this. And then a couple quick tips is always make sure that you do search network, Google and search partners. And then because we've been in COVID for the last year, the data is a little skewed because of that. So I like to make sure that I'm looking at the last 24 months so I can see what's happening prior to COVID and then what's happening like now that we're in it. Um, and it looks like hair salons are relatively back where they were, but of course you can see that huge dip in April when everything closed. It's sad to see, but um, this is why we look at data is so that way we can know where things are at. Um, and here's where like the most important stuff is. I'm going to move this thing over. There we go. And I like to see what's being searched the most. And this is something that I get all the time with clients. Like clients will be like, I want to rank for Denver painting contractor. And then I'll do keyword research. And you'll find that the keyword that they want to rank for doesn't get as much searches as like something else. And the whole purpose of this is we're trying to identify like a low hanging fruit. And what I mean by that is something that's like easiest to get seen on. So for example, hair salon, it's not getting as much uh, searches as hair salon near me. It's about half, uh, but the competition are both low. And then what's unique is that the bid price is significantly better for hair salon near me. And this is what I would call a low hanging fruit. I don't want to pay $7 per click. I don't want to pay $10 per click. Um, here is another one, super cuts near me. This is a little bit challenging. Like if I was a hair salon, I don't think I would bid on this phrase or set up an SEO campaign for something like super cuts. Like that's someone who's like specifically interested in super cuts. But 
if I was, if I had a big marketing budget and I was looking to get new clients, this is something I might consider. I might try and steal like customers from Supercuts if I was feeling really bold and I had great pricing that matched that. Um, so this is where like you start. You're trying to find what's the best keywords possible for your SEO campaign or your pay-per-click campaign. You get the data right here to see how much you're going to spend on if you're going to be doing pay-per-click. Um, and so what comes next? Well, you actually have to build the landing page next. And this is where Elementor ties in. And I'm so excited because Elementor just released a recent update that has a landing page builder or a landing page builder inside of it. Um, and I was a little confused at first of like how to get there. Uh, so I'll do a quick demonstration. Here's just like a quick site that I just like installed on my server. Uh, you go to, I only have a few plugins installed. These are like the plugins I use on almost all my sites, Elementor, Elementor Pro, PowerPack Pro for Elementor and Rank Math SEO. We'll go, we'll touch on Rank Math in a little bit. Um, but if you're trying to get to the landing page builder, typically in the past, like you would just do it on a standard page. Like you'd go to pages, add a new one and then build on the landing page there. But the new feature that they implemented is in beta. You go to Elementor uh, settings or experiments. There we go, experiments. And then it's currently active. You might need to set it to active. It might be set at default, but that's how you get access to it. It's active, it's in beta. So there might be some potential bugs. Make sure that you, like, you don't put this on your main site uh, without testing it first on like a staging site or something. Um, but how you actually get to it then is you go to templates and then it's like right where pop-ups would be. So here it is, landing pages. So let's go to landing pages and let's create one. Let's um, let's say we're gonna like create one for a hair salon just cause that's what we're looking at for keywords. Um, so you're gonna get the page set up. It's gonna take a second to load. And this is what I love about Elementor. And this is what I do throughout my entire design process. When I'm building websites, or I'm building landing pages. As I go to these templates because they're just in a, a, like an amazing place to start. Um, so I'm gonna choose a template that best matches the style that I'm looking for. You can see at the top, where to go. I actually use that for like the, the landing page that I built for this. Um, I don't know if it's still over there, but that's, that's where I got that template. I used the landing or an Elementor template to build that landing page that we're seeing here. And I made a few tweaks with stuff that I already had on my website that I just copy pasted over, but every, like pretty much the whole design of it was a template. So I didn't have to spend too much time doing that. So like what best matches like a hair salon? Uh, that's what we're looking for. I'm not too sure. I'm going to choose something like kind of fancy. I know they have like a hair salon major template in Elementor, but yeah, let's see one, if I can. There's one right there called hairstylist, bro. Ah, see, I'm just, oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. I'm as blind as a bat sometimes. Um, but that is a perfect example. Uh, Elementor has an amazing library when it comes to these templates. Personally, like, like I'm not a I'm not the biggest fan of this landing page builder. I would have just loved to see more templates available, just like on pages and stuff like that. But it's still cool. Like this landing page builder is like perfect if you're going to be doing like an event or something, and it's not going to be a page that's going to be for like the long term. Um, I wouldn't really recommend this landing page builder if you're doing like an SEO campaign. But it's great for like a pay per click one. Um, it's great if you're doing an event. It's if it's just for something for the short term. Uh, if you're going to do something for SEO, it's best to build it as like a standard page on your website. Uh, of course, we're going to have issues with it being inserted in here. Oh. Let's see. You forgot to click on uh, post type of landing page, I guess. Oh, I did? stylist. Okay. For some reason, my account wasn't connected. So let's just connect it real quick. I thought I did this earlier. I thought I was prepared. That's what Boy Scouts taught me is that I'm supposed to always be prepared. No big deal, dude. It's all good. <laughs> For real, you're doing great. Appreciate it. Of course, it's not. I got to refresh the page. Another pro tip, if you're having issues with like something on like your website and stuff like that, it's always the cache. Like it's almost always the cache and how you can get around the cache is do control shift and then refresh compared to just refreshing it normally. Let's see if that solved that though. 
Oh, of course not. Oh, no, it did. We're in luck. All right. So look at it. It's already a landing page built for us. And like, it, it's pretty much like what we need. Um, let's make sure it's working on mobile because mobile first. Remember that. Let's see what it's looking on mobile. I'm liking it. I am liking this. Like, and this makes like our job so much easier as web designers, having these templates to start off from. And then of course, like you're probably already have a website that's already built for this hairstylist. So you can just drag elements into here that you already had maybe on like another page that are most that can work on this landing page. Um, but if you're actually going to be doing like SEO for something like this, that's when some, that's when it gets a little bit more tricky. Um, so how I would do that is like, I use rank math for SEO. Uh, Yoast is another great tool. I use that for years. And I think that integrates uh, nicely with Elementor. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I know rank math does like, this is what I use. So I did that by clicking these, this little grid here at the top and then choosing SEO. And then this gets me my rank math kind of suggestions of what I need to be doing for proper SEO. So if I was gonna be ranking for hair salon near me, it's kind of a weird keyword to do organically. So we would do hair salon in that case and then build a pay-per-click campaign around that phrase because it's cheaper. That's like would be my strategy for it, but hair salon. And then hair salon is gonna be like a really difficult like a keyword to rank organically because think about everyone's trying to rank for that so is there like a different keyword that we can try and rank for organically that i'm seeing here um not really yeah no well, let's just stick with hair salon let's not make this too complicated and here you put, well the reason why i wouldn't do hair stylist is because the most popular keyword is hair salon near me so pay-per-click has like a tad bit of SEO into it. So you get this something called quality score on Google ads and quality right. score is determined by three things, keyword relevancy. So very much similar to SEO, um, landing page experience and the, uh, what's the third one? Landing page experience, keyword relevancy and click-through rate, expected click-through rate. So keyword relevancy is like, that ties into like the ad that you're using. So like if I was gonna make an ad and I'll touch on this a little bit more with one of my actual campaigns that I'm doing. Um, but the reason why I'm not doing hair stylist is because the most popular term is hair salon. And then that would be the cheapest one to bid on. And then we could repurpose this SEO page for a pay-per-click campaign if we needed some, some quick customers uh, anytime in the future. So here you put in your keyword and I'm not gonna like waste time going through all these steps right here. I think it's just a good example to show you like what a focus keyword is and how you can use a plugin like Rank Math to get there. It gives you all these little things that you need to do. And then if you're unsure what they mean, like you just click the question mark and then it tells you more about it. Like this is how I learned SEO a long time ago, except it was through Yoast instead of Rank Math. Um, Here's an example of like this page. So on this one, SEO, like this one has an awful SEO score because I'm not like, this was not built for SEO at all. Like this was built for these presentations. Um, I'm not gonna be doing pay-per-click for it, uh, but this is the landing page that I built on my website. So I build websites for tattoo artists. So this is one that I'm doing a multi-purpose campaign for. This is for SEO as well as pay-per-click. Um, so here it is, I have tattoo artist websites as the focus keyword and there's my score 89 out of 100. It's not a total like perfect score because admittedly, like I don't have the keyword as much as I probably should throughout the copy of this web or of this landing page. It's a little bit more like I'm putting more of my um, focus on the aesthetics of it. Like I'm trying to make it engaging because if I'm gonna be building a website, like I wanna make this the most like craziest user experience possible for people looking at this page to go like, okay, wow, he can build something incredible. Like I want him to build my website. So I really wasn't focused too much on the functionality of it. Um, and then, I mean, I really should be putting more text in and getting this keyword in some more. I could probably sneak it into this copy here as well. Um, but at least I'm giving myself the put potential to rank organically. It's better than not doing it at all, in my opinion. Um, and here it gives me everything that I'd be doing to get to the score compared to this one, which is like an atrocious score. Um, and when like looking at this one, like this is my pay-per-click campaign. Let's go back to AdWords. Site design, ad groups. 
this isn't the best this week wasn't the best week but you can see is this going to tell me quality score no let's see what are the ads the ads are like this is a pay-per-click campaign that i'm doing and as you can see here like here's like the ads that people see if they search tattoo art oh nope that brought me to the landing page edit this is essentially what people see in the search results when they're searching for a tattoo artist website. Um, and like everything is based around this keyword because like this is something that's getting very infrequent amount of searches. I think it's like only like 50 average monthly searches. Uh, so everything is based around this. You can see it's like my H1 tag here in the on the actual page itself. It's I'm mentioning it in the actual headline title. It's specifically mentioned it's not mentioned in the description. Typically, I would also put the keyword in the description as well. And that helps your quality score uh, everywhere where you put that keyword. So let's go to keywords and then quality score over here. Five out of 10, that is not great. Um, but what it's saying is my expected kick through rate is above average for that one. Average, 23% is average and 10% is above average. And then 0% is average. I don't like, I sometimes get really confused by Google. I'm not going to lie. Like how they determine things always serves me for a loop. Ad relevance is above average, above average. And then the landing page experience is below average. Um, that's not great to see. Uh, that it could be because I had this campaign from a while ago and the updates that I made to it over the last month might not be reflecting yet because I know I had a below average and I completely changed my landing page experience so that way I could get this up. And quality score is important for like SEM uh, because it it determines like what you're going to be paying to show your ads at the top of the page. Someone with like a 10 out of 10 quality score is going to pay less per click than someone who has like a two out of a 10 quality score. So your quality score is super important. Um, and there's so much that goes into SEM. So I'm not going to spend too much time like talking about like all these other metrics and things inside here, unless people have questions for the end. There's still a lot more others to cover. Uh, we're going to get into like actual landing page optimizations now. Um, so analytics, like looking at your analytics, we already had a presentation about this. So I'm going to lightly touch on this one. Um, so typically, like if I'm looking at my data, like you have to be skeptical of your data. Like this looks pretty good at first glance. You see this, you're like, okay, he got 300 users for the year so far. Keep in mind, my business started six months ago. So like this is nowhere near like the traffic that I'm getting on like my old marketing agency site. Like um, if there's time, I might like pull up uh, their analytics account just because you'll see a big difference and you can actually dive into the data some more. Um, but this one, like you're seeing this stuff and you're seeing like, oh, wow, three minutes and 59 second average session duration and a pretty low bounce rate, 60%. That's pretty good. But like, the thing is, is like, I know from years of experience that you have to be super skeptical of this data. So once we actually change this to everyone but me, because I visit my site so much, here's the real data that we're getting. And that's something that I see all the time that people forget to do is that they forget that they visit their site all the time or they don't realize that they should be specifically looking at like just their area. So Massachusetts, if I was a business that was based in Massachusetts, I would only care about who's visiting my site in my service area. I don't give a crap if someone in California is visiting my site because they're not gonna be a customer. So it's really important to use like these segments to get different views, to really understand how your traffic is performing on your website. Um, and then typically like, most things that I'll do is like, I always just like quickly go check the mobile overview just because I want to see, like I say mobile first and that tends to be true. Um, but I have a client who's a caterer and his website gets like 70% desktop traffic. He's like the weird one case example where he actually is not mobile first. So when I go do landing pages for him or I work on his website, I do it from the perspective of a desktop user because that is the priority based off his data. So it's always important to, um, make sure your assumptions are true through the data, but be extremely skeptical of your data when you're looking at it. Um, something else I'll typically go look at is like all traffic and then channels. And this will tell me like where people are coming from. So like direct, who specifically put in my URL, who came from my SEM campaigns, who came from organic search results, uh, social media, referral, and then other. This is what I was talking about with those custom tracking URLs. So look at, look at all these people who are visiting from Chicago once I put in that link. Um, Books Close is a promotion I did on a podcast. 
Uh, New England was the, the meetup that I did. Cold is when I do cold emails. Juniper Catering is like at the bottom of like a website. I put a backlink to my site in, and then I'd use one of these custom tracking URLs to see which one of my websites are uh, like people are coming from to know like, okay, like should I be focusing more on this client since they're getting like a lot of traffic to my website and just say like, hey, thank you. And then talk about like a referral program or something with them. And then business card, uh, people who came from my business card. And since I don't go out for meetings too much, <laughs> not too many people came from the business card. Um, so that's analytics. Uh, like I said, I wasn't going to spend too much time in that. Next is Microsoft Clarity. This one is cool. Like, I love this one. This felt, this felt kind of dirty when I discovered it, just because I was like, I didn't know I could be doing this. I didn't, because like, here it is. Like, you, you get recordings. You can see, like, okay, they scroll down here. What are they clicking? What are they going through? Like, this is something you see all the time. Like, people just scroll all the way down to the page before they do anything else. Like, that is, like, the standard thing I see. And, like, you can see that they click the, the pop-up that came up about, like, my cookie policy and privacy policy and all that. And then they're here just doing some stuff. And then they probably left at some point. And I can just go through this. I can see what's happening for like landing pages uh, for like my tattoo artist campaigns or just anything else. And it just gives me such a good idea of how things are performing and what I need to focus on. And I really like using these uh, toggle uh, descriptions. So let me go back to here. I really love using these toggle things on my landing pages. Like you'll see it here. And then you'll also see it on this one, the tattoo artist websites. And the reason for that is because when you're looking at it through Microsoft Clarity, it allows you to know what is the question that they're most interested in. And then I can prioritize these things when I'm going through it. And that's part of an A-B test that I'm doing. It's like, which one of these things are they most interested in so I can provide more relevant information that they're curious about, which is why I make it so it has to be clicked so that I can actually get that feedback compared to just something that they could read. And I wouldn't know what they're reading. Um, and then let's see, you get heat maps too. I don't find these too useful. I mainly look at recordings. Some weird things happen with recordings like numbers and icons and stuff like that show up as these dots. That's not because of anything going on. Um, that's just, that's something you'll see. That's something you can expect. Uh, but you know, one of the cool things about this is because every device is different. And what separates like a professional web designer from an amateur web designer is someone who builds websites beyond just their own devices. Um, so it's really hard to do that unless you're using like a variety of tools or you have multiple devices. And that's like something I'll see. It's like, I'll see like a really weird like view or like viewport and be like, okay, my website is not optimized for this specific kind of device. And then I know, okay, I gotta make sure that it works for these dimensions. So that way things aren't appearing weird. Um, that's another added benefit of using Clarity. Um, here's the campaign URL builder I was talking about. Super simple to set up. You put in the URL that you want to send people to. Uh, here's the campaign source that I'm using to track. So Chicago, the medium is through a link just for organization purposes and then campaigning presentations because I do a variety of presentations. Um, and I do these for everything. Like I have a, just a giant Excel document that's just all my custom URLs. So that way I just have them all tracked. So that way I can go put them in whenever I need to. And, and this is just a great tool to utilize. Um, here's Google Optimize. Google Optimize has so much functionality to it beyond just A-B testing, but that's primarily what I use it for. Here's a cool little application of it. So when someone visits my site and they're coming from uh, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, just because that's where a lot of my advertising is focused on is I primarily target the area that I'm in just because I'm most familiar with it. It's something that I connect with people over. Um, so when people come from my area, New England, on my home page, it says creative solutions for creative entrepreneurs in New England because it knows these areas. And when I have time on my massive list of things to do, at some point I would probably do this for every single state. So it feels customized to every user possible. So like you can get all, like there, it goes beyond just locations. You can do this for a variety of things like devices. And uh, uh, there's a lot of ways you can play around with it. Um, but for the most part, I use these for A-B testing and it's pretty simple to get set up. So here's a draft. I don't, I don't know if I actually 
I don't know if we have the time. I might, I might save this for later. Um, but pretty much what it does is like you put in something, you tweak it. Uh, so for example, this one was, I was tweaking if I got more interaction based off someone, if the, the copy was learn more compared to discovery call. And then you can see based off the data, uh, I think discovery call, yeah, discovery call was the better option. So that's what I typically use if I'm putting like a button that says, and I actually stole that from Carlos, fun fact. Like I love calling it a discovery call. And I was curious to see if I would get better results from that. And Google Optimize says it's the better one. And I'm doing this for a few things. So on the tattoo websites, it's showing, let's see, what's it showing? Oh, the click-through action at the bottom. So another useful thing is like at the bottom of this campaign, this is the offer that I have. Like if I'm actually putting like money behind something, like I'm providing an offer uh, to make sure that I can incentivize getting people's uh, contact information. Um, and this is the offer. I do these customized strategy guides. I actually require them for any client that I'm doing, but people who are visiting my site don't know that yet. Um, so it seems like an offer, but it's essentially a place where I get started. If I'm working with someone, this is an example of it, where I pretty much just go over what are they doing well, just so that way I understand like, what can we like, double down on. So for example, this client that I was working with, he utilizes video. He has a camera, like it's awesome to see. So we can like really play to that and like make sure he's focusing like on using Instagram reels or using video content on his website and stuff like that. Uh, and then I like look at their opportunities. So I'm always looking at keyword opportunities. Like I said, it's the first place I start in anything for any landing page that I'm building is I got to know what keywords are most relevant to their area. Um, and then we take a look at the potential opportunities for like SEM and SEO. Uh, and this is the offer that I provide for people um, if, I, if they're visiting my landing page. Like this is the incentive of why you should leave your contact information with me. Um, and that is what this A-B test was about, was I was changing out the copy of it. Um, and then another one is services. So like on my services page, I was playing around with how much text was appearing on it. Um, and this was saying that no text performs better than compared to having text, which again, it's, it was one of my assumptions, but it's always good to back up those assumptions with data um, because sometimes you can be wrong. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And then going back to HubSpot, this is an example of someone who came to my website, submitted one of those forms on that page that I was just showing you. They were interested in that offer. And I can specifically see here in their like account tab, uh, like, okay, they visited the site on this date, they viewed these pages. And if I was really curious, like if this guy became a customer, he didn't, he was a very cold lead. Um, but if this guy became a customer, I could go back specifically to this date in analytics or uh, Microsoft Clarity, and specifically look at his customer journey to see what made him become a customer. Um, so that's the benefit of having something like that in a tracking it in your CRM. Um, let's see, I, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this. Uh, I hope there's still time for questions. I, I was not keeping track of time. Okay, perfect. There is because I know there's going to probably be a lot. <laughs> yeah, we've, got, we've got a lot of questions out there. Definitely. <laughs> oh, boy. You want, me to start, you want me to start reading them off for you? Yes, that would be perfect. Okay, let me jump back to the top here. Make sure. And then feel free to keep adding them people. Um, let's see. Got to sift through the introductions. Jay, Jay's uh, also sending some jokes in there too. So enjoy those. <laughs> um, somebody, I know somebody asked, I saw it earlier about, um, okay, here it is. If, if I have an image for desktop, but I choose responsive and hide this from mobile, will mm -hmm. this make my mobile page download faster? That's a good question. I actually don't know the answer to that off at the top of my head. I believe I just, it will. Um, knowing yes. like CSS, like that would probably be like display none on, or, you know, just not including it in the, uh, as like a media query, but I would assume it does. And I use that and it seems to. So I would just say I made a mistake before where essentially I had like, this was in when I was first doing web design. I essentially would build an entire page specifically for desktop, and then I would build an entire page for mobile. And like, that's not how you do it. Like, don't do it that way. <laughs> yeah, if if you can get away with it, definitely. Yeah, it's it makes it a little more difficult to maintain for sure. Yeah. You'll see that even on like this landing page though. Like for example, this only appears on mobile, and this disappears on mobile. So that's something I'm doing right in there on this page as like a example mm -hmm. yeah it's good 
Okay. Uh, let's see. Somebody asked for the recording from last meeting. I did post that and you'll find the rest of our recordings there as well. Um, let's see. How to make a landing page. I'm trying to figure out if this is a question or not. I don't think it is. Okay. Um, how do you make a custom URL? Is that is there a tool for that? So you made that uh, URL you sent yes. out to us? Yep. This is it. I'll put this in the chat right now. I, I it mean, it's also chat. on that landing page. So like, uh, if you go to chicago.dos-m.com, you'll find that you can interact with all these tools that I was talking about. You just like, if you're like, oh, I really need to get HubSpot, go right here and then just click HubSpot and it'll take you off to this. And while this topic is on my mind currently, if with a landing page, like, this is structured as like a funnel. I don't want people to be browsing around my site. Like I want them engaging just with this page, which is why you don't see my standard header on it. And then most importantly, like there's really like few points for people to break off. Like the only place to break off is if you click one of these blogs and then anything that you're sending off your site, like this is just best practices, landing page or not. If you're linking off your site, make sure it always does open a new window. You don't want people opening it in this window because then they'll forget about your site and go on with their day. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, good. Um, let's see. There, somebody asked if that URL thing is a specific to Elementor. No, you can do it without. I think, that, I think you answered that. Um, let's see. Uh, Jay, Jay is going to start some stand up and he said he's going to fall down due to rotten tomatoes being thrown at him. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> And he also made new badge names. Uh, let's see. I know there's a few more. Okay. Um, dang it. Is Tyler available for a mentor session? That's from Jay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I actually do have a promo going on this month. I mean, if you visited this landing page, I have a pop-up. Another thing I forgot to talk about. Pop-ups are great for landing pages for specific things. Here's my cookie policy pop-up. Um, thank you, Termageddon. <laughs> and then like, if you're going to leave, here's one, it's an exit intent pop-up, which I love for landing pages. So one of the promos I have is 50% off hourly pricing. So this applies to anything. Like if you're looking for any type of digital optimizations or a specific one-on-one -on -one training, uh, it'd be under my hourly pricing. Cool. Thank you for that. All right. Um, let's see what kind of tools do you need when building a landing page? This is from Sarah. Um, so Sarah asks if you need the Microsoft Clarity, Google Optimize Analytics and Keywords Planner, uh, what do you really need to build the landing page? Yeah, so good question. You don't need all these things that I'm talking about. Like these are, this is after you've built your landing page and, and nothing's perfect. So this is how you continuously improve your landing pages, utilizing all these tools I was talking about. It doesn't like, I personally don't like the idea of just building a landing page and then leaving it. This is why I spent a good portion of this presentation talking about optimizing them. But the tools that you need to build a landing page is just your standard website builder. All you need is a website. So uh, let's see if we can get into the back end of it again. So what, what, what I was showing in this part of the demo is just having like, for example, Elementor is pretty much the only tool that you need to actually get a landing page put together. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, Chris, wait, can you wait? Can wait? Can you show uh, that the couple couple people were asking about? Can you show how to turn that back on though when they have Elementor Pro? Because yeah. uh, I, I I didn't go and check it. I just was telling them you just can go check it on Elementor Pro. So go back to the dash and show them how to do that. Yeah, yeah, that took me a while to figure out. I remember that update came out and like every day I was looking for it and I was right. just like, how the hell do I figure this out? Right. Uh, and then I found like a tutorial on YouTube that I was like, thank you, someone. So how you get to this is you go specifically to your WordPress backend. Um, and then here under Elementor, you'll see settings, click settings, and then choose experiments. And then under experiments, you have all these different things and landing pages is what you're looking for and make sure that's set to active. And that's how you get it to appear here under templates. And then you'll see if you choose templates, their landing pages appears. If you don't have it, if you have it inactive, it should, I believe it disappears. Yep, there, it's gone now. Uh, Tyler, so, another thing too, if you wanna look at, since you're in there, um, is the new custom code feature. Have you used that at all to add in like Google Analytics or HubSpot tracking oh, codes? No, I have not. Where is so that? See that custom oh, code? Right yeah. 
So this uh, this has allowed me to remove a lot of plugins for that stuff because you can just add quotes Ooh. right in your HTML from here. Yeah, it's sick. It's good. Okay, that is actually a game changer. Yeah, I deleted the HubSpot app. I deleted uh, Google Analytics, all of it because you don't need it. You just put your codes yeah. right there. Wow. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Because that's like on my actual site, like this is just a staging site. Like on my actual site, I have a plugin specifically to integrate Google analytics. I have a plugin specifically to integrate HubSpot. I have a plugin specifically yep. to integrate pixel. So this solves all that problem. Yeah. It solves all LinkedIn insights, all of it. So like basically all of your code can be put right in here and it works too. Cause I've done it, experimented with it and it works really well. Yeah. This isn't in beta. You only have to worry about the landing page builder since that's still in beta. Yeah. Cool. Um, any chance you want to show someone how to put a code in there just for those that aren't yeah. familiar with HTML and, and all yep. that? All right. I'm still sharing my screen, correct? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, um, I just think it's, re it's relevant to this is why I asked just because like, if you're, if you're tracking with Google analytics, it's really relevant to be able to do that. Yes. Uh, so let's go say we're setting up Microsoft Clarity. I believe I tip uh, in my site, I used it through Google Tag Manager, but you, I know for like these other ones that I've done, I've just done it through like the header. So what you do is you grab this, it says copy to clipboard, copy that, and then go over here into where to go. And then this one's going to be called Microsoft Clarity. Copy, paste that right in, publish where you want this to, oh, you can even choose conditions. So if you didn't want it to go on every page, you don't have to, but entire site is probably the best rule of thumb. Yeah, Save so then close. you can put it in the head or the body on the top or bottom. So if you're doing some JavaScript, um, I haven't tried it yet, but even putting like something like bootstrap in here, maybe interesting. I'm gonna grab some extra styles. Yeah, this is, and then how do you get to all your codes? Are they just here under? Yeah, it'll list kind of like blog posts. Awesome, okay, that's super useful. Yeah, it's way cool, man. It's way cool. Yeah, it's, <laughs> and it wasn't working for one of my sites because I have um, I have the WP Elevation white label plugin on one of my mm -hmm. sites, and I couldn't get it to work with that. It worked with another one, so I don't know. I know it's new, so I'm sure there there might be some. Kinks. So did you turn off elevation, or what did you do? How did you solve it, or did you just forget about it, Mike? I just dumped the one plugin for now, and until they fix it, and then I'll put it back. But um, oh, all right, yeah. <clears throat> But it actually worked on another site where I had that plugin on. So I don't, the white label plugin. So I don't know why. That oh, oh, so, it, so on one with the white label, it did work. And on one with the white label, it didn't work. Yes. Yeah. So, so it might not be the white label issue. It might be something else, right? It was the only, I mean, I don't have that many plugins. It was the only one that I deactivated that got it to go. So ah, I have some right. custom code on it too. So that might be why. I don't know. But huh. interesting. Okay. It's a mystery. Yeah, always. <laughs> okay, Chris uh, direct messaged me. So I'll, I'll read this out here for you. Um, do you assign your landing page, your mycompany.com, so your domain, or do you use a separate landing page URL? For example, in your MacBook Pro example, both the PPC and organic links go to apple.com slash MacBook Pro, but they directed to two different pages. How do you route that in the back end? That's a really good question. Um, I'm a little confused by that one. So that, that was based off what I clicked. So here, both the pay-per-click campaign and the search engine organic listings, uh, they're both like the, the main link is specifically this one, this, this general capture page, uh, okay, that links so you directly to the models. Yeah. It's only when you choose something specific, like the 16 inch or the 13 inch, then you get specifically redirected to one of these additional other pages. Okay. Uh, Chris, thanks, my bad. Oh, thanks, Chris. Thanks for the question. Yeah. And then I, it doesn't hurt to just say like, it's always best to make sure everything is ha like sent to, oh, sorry. That's interpreting a little bit wrong, but I know it's a question I get pretty often is people say like, should I use like a separate URL for like a landing page or something like that? And it's always best to use it on your true actual websites URL in case okay. anyone was wondering. Yeah. Um, you mean by, just really quick, by, by that you mean like your home, what would normally be your homepage URL, like mycompany.com? Yes. So the, uh, so I guess I made it a little bit confusing by having like a subdomain that redirects to it. Um, the, like everything is, every landing page I built is based off like my DOS dash 
dos-m.com URL. Same with this one. Is the, the actual URL is just dos-.com slash building a landing page. It's I'm using a subdomain of chicago.dos-m to do a custom redirect that puts in all this additional tracking code in it. So I don't have to, it doesn't bog up the user experience. It's not like this friction point. Because if I was just to put this in the chat, you guys would all see this giant link and go, Huh, that's a little strange um, compared to just putting in chicago.dos-m.com that takes you to the same exact URL. And you can also get there to by just not even putting that extra stuff. So it could just be dos-m.com slash building a landing page. And that would take you there and same exact stuff. I just wouldn't be able to track and know that it specifically came from this meetup presentation which is the purpose of me using that subdomain. Okay, so I guess I guess what is confusing to me is the pure essence difference of landing page, like, okay, I'm a Divi guy, just getting used to Elementor. And in their layout packs, you they give you a landing page layout. But in my old school mentality, it's like homepage is landing page. Yeah, so a homepage, a homepage is a great example of a landing page because that's where most people are going to land. Like that's like your biggest landing page, but a homepage is also a pathway for users to take to get to other pages on your website. The purpose of a landing page is so that way they don't have to go to any other, they don't have to take an additional step. All the information that they need is readily available to them. So for example, like um, this one, like this is a landing page specifically to tattoo artists that are interested in websites, but that's not everyone I talk to. The other landing page I have is just that URL minus the website portion to it. And it takes you to a very similar landing page, but it's a kind of catch all. It's essentially like a homepage without being a homepage that just talks about everything. And then you can learn more about websites, but it also talks about everything else that I do for people who might already have a website and they're not interested in a new one. I'm still able to use a landing page for that experience and it's getting them the most relevant information. Okay, so I think I got it. So the MacBook Pro 16, that's mm -hmm. a landing page. Yes. And so, so is this, so, so like you would send this, you would send people to this link for anyone who's interested in the 16 inch one because this is what they're most interested in. So what I'm trying to do or what we're trying to do is we're going to go ahead and build uh, landing specific pa pages for search results mm -hmm. and then and then try to funnel traffic to those results based on keyword optimization. Correct. Gotcha. So most people are going to specifically search MacBook Pro because they don't know what size they want. So that's where this landing page it, it, like that's how this is a landing page, but there's all, like, this is also a landing page because if you search MacBook Pro 16 inch, this is most likely gonna be the organic listing for that. So MacBook Pro 16 inch, let's just make sure that's true. And it is, or maybe not, maybe, it, nope, it is. So that is a landing page, the organic one. And then it's probably also, yep, it is for SEM as well. Because the idea, like I said, you wanna reduce as much friction as possible. The sad reality is people spend almost no time on your website. So you don't wanna create these extra steps for them to take. You wanna make it so that way, like they're in, they're out, you've got the conversion. And like, that's the thing I see with like a majority of my clients is people don't optimize for the user experience. And it's a little bit challenging to do so. It's just more work on your end. Um, like, so essentially like there's like a hierarchy to it is like your homepage is like, that's your general catch all landing page for everyone. Like you just say, go to this. Then you have one specific one under that's like more niche. So like in the example of painting contractors, like I was saying, is like there's their homepage that takes them to like their company that talks about all their services and about them. But then they also have landing page for each specific service that they offer. And then if there's something like a little bit more that goes like under that service, so like they might do interior painting, but they might do faux finishing as well. So faux finishing would be a landing page that falls under that interior painting landing page. Okay, cool. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, a couple more questions I see here. Um, can you, I think it was Drew that asked, oh, uh, does a hyphen affect how your name will, if you have a hyphen in your domain, does it affect your SEO? Um, 
I don't believe so. I mean, that's a good question. Think. Yeah, I I've never seen so. I, I've never seen anything about that person. I've done all the Yoast courses and never saw anything about. Yeah, that. I've never heard anything bad about it. Now I'm like curious. I'm like, am I? Did I shoot myself in the foot <laughs> choosing dos-m.com? But I don't think so. In the past, like your domain name used to be a, like a big factor in like SEO rankings. So, for example. If you were like a interior painter and you were in Branson, Missouri, that's fresh on my mind because I was working with a painter there. But anyways, and you chose your URL as Branson, Missouri painter, like you would dominate SEO in the past. Google saw like people who were just like using this as a shortcut to get to the front page of Google. And it's not as big as a factor when looking at everything that plays into SEO. So it's something like your actual domain URL is only a minor um, kind of factor when it comes to SEO. Yeah, good. Yeah, good point. Okay, um, Cassiopeia, sorry if I got your name mispronounced. Uh, will we have access to the recording? The kids were distracting you. Sorry about that. Yes, we will have access. I'll send that out Meetup, And if you join the Slack group, you'll see it there as well. Maureen asked, if you don't have your standard header on the landing page, how will visitors remember where they are, who you are? Good question. You don't have your, sorry, say that again. Um, so if you don't have your standard header on your landing page, Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's, um, that's a challenging one. So that's something like it, it, again, a little bit of a balancing act. And this is very much like this landing page is very much the click funnels approach. Uh, you could put in some information that way people know who you are. Um, but I mean, the like one of the biggest things is like, you have to understand like who your audience is when you're building this landing page, like, for example, like this audience is like the, the group. So I know there's gonna be these times for questions. I know there was gonna be the introduction. I had the fortunate ability to make sure like I plugged my business, digitally optimized systems to marketing. And then I made sure that this link chicago.dos-m would be out there. So it was not a concern in my mind when building a landing page. But if I was gonna do one, like for example, like this one, let's go back to it for the tattoo artist websites. Let's go back. This one, I'm specifically mentioning my name right here, digitally optimized systems to marketing, because I want to make sure that that's, it's at least like some sort of um, kind of, how do I put it? Like, I'm going for like inception, like that's the word that's in my mind right now, like, because I'm trying to make sure that like, it's a subliminal messaging of DOS-M, they'll see it in the URL, it's in the advertisement uh, that they would see from the pay-per-click campaign. Um, and then I don't think there's anything else that mentions specifically the business. But that is something that you just have to understand when you're doing like a funnel approach is that there's not going to be like that there's going to most, there's going to be bounces and that bounce traffic is just going to disappear unless you're doing a retargeting campaign. So like, I would say retargeting campaigns are extremely effective right now or super important. So like in the past, like prior to the pandemic, I would see like great results from SEO and pay-per-click, but I'm finding now that people are like to get an actual conversion takes a little bit more time and a little bit more of like follow-ups. So retargeting, I would say is super important. So like once someone is actually on this page, like I've captured their information and then I can retarget to them through Facebook, through Google, through a variety of methods. Um, so that's typically my approach with it. Hmm. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, Maureen, was that good? Answer your question. Yeah, I can see you. I see you're not. Um, good. All right. Jay has a new question. SEO seem to be embedded within Elementor. Is that native or tied to a specific plugin? So I think yes. the rank math. Yeah. Yep. So that is specifically, I believe Yoast has this too. Um, it does. Like, yep. Okay. Yeah. So this is, and that's what I love about this. This wasn't here like a year ago. This is like kind of like a new feature that they implemented in uh, Elementor where you can specifically get to your SEO settings live here on the page. In the past, you would specifically have to go, let's see page you would specifically have to do it from like the wordpress page back end and then you would get all these things here on the side like it would be just like right over here is where you would do it before but since it's actually on the page while you're building it, it makes it so much easier helps the workflow mm, yep absolutely good uh sarah has another question uh i have elementor pro can we build sales funnel after the landing page can we integrate active campaign or other email platforms to the landing page can we integrate payments such as PayPal or Stripe into the landing page? So three-part question. Um, 
can you first, can we build a sales funnel after the landing page? Yeah, so you could. So the landing page, I mean, again, you're keeping in mind of like the user experience. So if I'm understanding the question, career, or if I'm understanding the question, how I'm interpreting it is like, what you're saying is, can we build a landing page that redirects them to the sales funnel after? And the landing page's goal is to bring them to that sales page. Um, that could be an approach of it. But keeping in mind of the user experience is you want to have as, as few steps as possible. So by making it so that way they have to go through the landing page to the sales page, that's one extra step to take. It might be worth it in like some aspects, like you might have to get someone familiar with whatever service or product that you're trying to sell them. Um, so it might need this additional step to it. But most of the time it's like, I, I come from the belief that you wanna have like almost no steps. Like everything should be there ready on that page. It should go information first and then sale at the bottom. That's typically my approach when designing a landing page. And you can see that like here, it's um, you're seeing the information, the clients that I've worked with, my number one rule, mobile first, and then just common questions related to this. And then here's the sales approach right here at the bottom, the, the offer, as well as just a general contact form and a couple of testimonials. Yeah, the site looks good, man. Really good. Appreciate it. Awesome. Powered by Elementor. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then her second part is integrating active campaign or other email platforms into the landing page. So I'm assuming um, it could even be HubSpot, MailChimp, anything. Right? Yeah. So currently my MailChimp account is in here. So where is it? Yeah. MailChimp. So on my forms, I've integrated MailChimp with it. So I have like a couple tags. So I know that they came through a web form and I know that they're, if they came from this page, I know it's specifically a tattoo artist. So it tags them as tattoo. Um, so that's how I have MailChimp integrated with this page. I don't personally use active campaign, but it, you, you should be able to integrate it with your landing pages. Yeah. I know Carlos is a big fan of active campaign. I've also used HubSpot. HubSpot is like crazy good. HubSpot is amazing. Like yeah. this, this change. It's scary everything. what they know on there. <laughs> on yeah. There. <laughs> when I got the demo, like after like I got like the demo from them, I was like, I was, I was sold. I was like, we're, we're, we're signing up. And this is back when I was like, I was actually working with like a, a I was the director of a marketing agency and I could afford the premium of spot yeah. plan. I miss it. I miss it so much. I'm using, yeah, that's something I didn't say. Everything is free. So I'm using the free version of this currently. Yeah. The, uh, the premium one where you get everything, it's like about 10 K a year or something, isn't it? Pretty, it's expensive yeah. if you use um novo bank it's like a digital bank you get like an insane discount on a, a lot of these things that i'm talking about hubspot included so oh, just no something way. to consider so i know once i'm ready to like bite the bullet and purchase the premium hubspot again at least i have a discount this time <laughs> yeah, you need, yeah definitely because it's it's up there so that discount means something for sure yeah <laughs> Okay, and then Sarah's third part is integrating PayPal, Stripe, I believe, as long as you can integrate it on any other page, it shouldn't be a problem. But. Yep, if I like wanted to, like if I was like, no, none of the clients that I talk to are ready to purchase something in this moment. Um, but in other cases, so like the marketing agency, imamarketing.com, I still work with these guys, um, but I'm no longer, I mean, technically my title is still digital marketing director, but I just work on like a, part-time basis but you can see here we have it specifically where we're sending people to this and then they can buy like things right there in that moment like they can buy a basic website and they, it, this is integrated with woocommerce um but there would just be as easy to put like a paypal form or something where they could buy it right then and there oh two i was gonna say only 200 bucks 200 a month i see <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> say <Hey>, dang <laughs> That's uh, I might just have to give it up and just pay them. To do it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, all right. Good deal. Uh, will custom code option work in the universal header? I sure hope so. Um, cause I've been using it and I think it does. And then how to add a tracking script to an individual page. I think we did show that, um, mm -hmm. Pr Pradeep, do you need to see that again? You wanted to speak up or throw something in the chat? We did show it, um, through there. Actually, uh, Taylor. Yes. Actually, I I like to know how to add uh, the analytics code on a specific page. Let's say yeah. we have ten pages, and on ninth page only we, uh, we need to add the analytics code. Then how to do that? All right. So you're gonna go to your Google Analytics account down here at the bottom. Go to Admin Tracking Info under the Property Settings. Go to Tracking Code. 
go over here and copy paste this. Copy, go to your custom code things that we were showing over here, choose add new. And I am so excited that we get to choose specific pages because this is something I will be doing soon. Analytics. Yes, yeah, Google. This, uh, webinar's over, you're gonna be. <laughs> yeah, I'll we'll be playing around. <laughs> and then instead of entire site, choose singular, all singular. And you could do like pages, like uh, have just it appear on one page or you could do another one, a bunch of different ways, save and close. And there it is. You can even exclude too. So like if you want to put on all pages except one, you can create a rule to exclude it. So I love so it, I love conditional logic. Yeah. So hey, it's super easy in Element, right? Yes. Yes. And like I mean, I'm assuming you're using Elementor, but if you weren't using Elementor, you would go to appearance, um, theme editor, and then is it theme editor? Yes. And then you would choose header. Uh, and then you would put it in the header over here. And then you put it down over in there. But I hate touching the theme stuff. It always yeah. scares me. I learned PHP specifically for this. <laughs> but now I don't have to. Like, that's the beauty of Elementor. You don't have to know code to get all this stuff done. Um, code is just like an extra tool that you can use. I personally try and use as little custom coding as possible in my sites just because I don't want to complicate them. Mm hmm that's good. Yep. Thanks. Okay. No problem. Um, question about SEO on Elementor. Is it embedded in the plugin? Oh, that's, he already asked that. Jay, you already asked that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So Jay, for the SEO, you've got to download either the Rank Math plugin or Yoast SEO. I know for sure those two work. Um, I don't know if any of the other ones work, but those do work. All right. I think... I'm missing anything here. Uh, what about speed optimization for sites? Ah, do you recommend WP Rocket or something else? Uh, speed, that is on my giant list of things to do. Um, just because that is a huge factor into SEO as well as just like general user experience on a website. I'm actually going to be attending an Elementor presentation tomorrow that I'll be going over this. I think it's like Elementor Dallas just because I'm always looking to learn more about it. Um, typically what I do for speed is first things it's always images, like making sure that you're using, either you're optimizing them on your own end, like locally, or you're using a plugin like uh, uh, it's not Hummingbird, uh, Smush. Smush is like a good free plugin to help optimize your images. Uh, and then typically like I use SiteGround. So all my websites are hosted on SiteGround for the most part. And I'll use their SiteGround optimizer tool. So like right over here, let me pull that up. So here under speed for my website, I have, they just released a bunch of updates regarding that. Oh, fun stuff. Um, so they just implemented a lot of thing. I, I do technically have a premium WordPress Rocket account that I've been thinking about implementing, but I've gotten pretty good results from using just SiteGround, uh, all this stuff. Cloudflare as well is another good tool to use. Of course, I'm having a error when I go to show it. <laughs> yeah, it's a but, live presentation. Why wouldn't there be? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But then if I refresh the page, it's fine and active. So it, it, there's no problems with it. Um, it's hard though. Like speed is a really hard thing when it comes to websites. I was just talking about this when someone was asking like, what do you prefer, Squarespace or Wix or WordPress when it comes to speed? And like, I think my site, like my site isn't the best. Like here it is. I have a separate tab over here that I always have things like pin to here's my site like this is always so i can like whenever i sign in my computer i always look at this to remind me i need to fix my site speed um it's not something i prioritize at the moment and i probably should soon uh but there's so much that goes into speed uh where it's mainly like the back end and i've been currently i'm in like a like a, one of those like online courses to learn javascript so that way i can get better at fixing the code of the back end. And this is just something that plagues page builders in general. Like if you're using a page builder, like you, your speed isn't going to be as good as completely a custom coded website. And this right. is something that you face all the time. But I will say like one of my clients, Juniper Kading Connecticut, I got like their site to like an A plus score. Um, like this site is like phenomenal on speed and it still has like a lot of, the more images I added though, the slower it got. Um, but this site was like, if you're using like as few plugins as possible, you're optimizing your images, you're not doing too much like custom, like 
fancy things to it, uh, you can still get like an A plus score in GT metrics. So it is possible. It's just a little bit more challenging. And the more complexity you add, the slower your site gets. Sounds like a good topic for May. Yes. <laughs> uh, we, we need a topic for May and uh, maybe it could be, you know, we could try something different and do kind of like a little round robin type thing where everybody, cause I just, I'm looking at the chat and everybody's got their own plugin that they use and own, uh, own way to do it. So maybe if we want to just have more of a, a group discussion on speed and just hear from everybody and what they do, that might be pretty cool to kind of change it up a little bit. What does everybody think? Thumbs up. I like that idea. Personally. Okay. Good, because that helps me not have to find a presenter. I can get a little break for that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, we can do that. I'll uh, I'll post some details in Slack. So yeah, there's Cloudflare, there's WP Optimize, WP Rocket, uh, GT Metrics, all the you know the way of of uh, looking at the waterfall and all that stuff. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I've I've learned a lot, so I, I'm definitely curious to hear what everybody else does. I personally use WP Rocket. It's blazing fast uh i yeah. i went on limited do it for unlimited sites and just use it for everything so it's awesome the i the the web designer that i work with at like my old agency she's talks so highly about wordpress rocket so i've been thinking about maybe i should switch from cloudflare to that yeah well i actually use cloudflare with it okay you can do that i wasn't sure i always get like scared because i remember like it's just one of these things where i learned from errors it's like i had a site where i used like multiple cache plugins and the site just did not want to work after that it was like they were having conflicts with each other so i've always just been like scared about that you have to choose the right option in cloudflare when you use cloudflare you have to choose you know like you have to know like what do you want to do with um um you know like click off this you know, turn mm -hmm. this off in a Cloudflare so that it works with your with your caching plugin, and you have to kind of look at you know there's going to be a tutorial somewhere on that. It'll be there'll be a guide from from the tutor from the caching plugin or from Cloudflare or from your host. They'll say if you're using this, do this and that, right? And personally, I stopped using Cloudflare only because and it's always you know some there's varying discussions about this, opinions about it, and I have. I usually subscribe to the one that would say you should use Cloudflare. Like I don't use the same registrar for my host, you know, and so on and so forth. Right. Says so if one goes down, I don't want it all to go down. Right. So, yeah. And so Cloudflare is a content delivery um, network that puts it on us. It takes, it redirects your, your name server. Right. So you have it, it's then becomes your host. Mm -hmm. Bunny, on the other hand, I've been using Bunny more often because it's easier to set up. And it's just one of those deals where you pay as you go. So you, it, it gives you the pricing for like North America, Southeast Asia, Africa, and Europe. And you just click off if you, you know, if you want to use a CDN for those areas. And then you put some money on your books, like 50 bucks. And that'll last you like a year, right? Because they, it's a pay as you go, right? Yeah. So, uh, and then it gives you a little code. You put it in the Bunny plugin. And then I use WP Optimize Pro. And um, I just make sure that everything is optimize and, and I don't have to have my EWWW image optimizer anymore or and it uses the smush algorithm that's what WP optimize uses and yeah. uh, it, it minimizes my Java and minimizes my CSS you have to sometimes pay attention to if things come up weird you have to pay attention and turn off certain scripts like elementary yeah. scripts don't work well with some of the minimization but that's what I'm really noticed. um it, it works great you know um and 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 you know and I agree with uh, Mike, we should have that. We should do a round robin or something like that, or, you know, whatever, or I, or I can put it together. Cause I've used damn near every one of these options um, and, and, and tried them and, and, you know, I'd have no problem like firing them back up and like showing different things and showing some uh, outcomes, you know, actual data outcomes uh, yeah. for the change, you Definitely. know, but, yeah. but I mean, I use WP, I use GT metrics for a long time. And then of course, when the new, new Google algorithm stuff came out, it, it was looking funky. So I went to w, uh, word, webpage test, uh, dot org and started checking things and um, everything was great. Uh, like the, what I was used to seeing uh, and then I started getting these weird security ratings, HSTS security ratings, getting fails in there. And then I figured out how to put some code in the uh, HT access file. And now I get A pluses for security and everything else is running fine in my you know, time to first content paint, whatever that is, you know, uh, all are low and everything's running perfect. Um, you know, except for that one issue I was talking about at the beginning and 
that's a simple little buck, you know, thing I clicked on, you know, a little button thing, but uh, yeah, I love it. So great. Oscar, you have something? See your hand up. Yes. Uh, have you guys spoken about uh, speed, page speed? That's what we were just talking about. We were going to do something in May for that, uh, kind of a round robin where everybody kind of puts their input in as to what they okay. use. Just, uh, just uh, something that I want to let you know. I just uh, installed a plugin for, for the cache. And I jumped from 28 to 99 in performance in three, in three minutes or less. Well, don't leave us, don't leave us in anticipation. What's this plugin you're talking about here, Oscar? <laughs> Let me show you. I'm not kidding you. I was surprised. This, uh, I got this from an elementary group in, in Spain. And let me let me share the screen for a second. Okay, uh, Tyler, do you mind stop sharing? So you, uh, this is gonna make this is gonna be a, a game changer for many of us, as it was for me. Are you doing it, man? You have to click share one more time and see it. Uh, I'm oh, wait, 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 wait. Share screen. No, host disabled participants. Oh, sorry. Screen sharing. Yeah, just watching off of those Zoom bombers. Go ahead. You're good. It's like a magic. Okay, <laughs> let me show you where I was. This is where I was. Are you seeing uh, yep. the 28, right? Mm -hmm. This is where I got to. And this is what I used. Nitro pad. All right. Give it a check. The free, I mean, it's an expensive plugin, but the freebie can do most of the things that uh, are needed. Cool. And I've, I've, I've used it so far in about 10 websites. And the results go from, the, they're about that, about the same. Ooh, it is expensive. Yes, it is expensive. But the free is more than enough for basic things. Hmm. But this is something I, I mean, I could keep it to myself. I had to share it with you. Thank you. Yes, bring that. Uh, and, and as you test it through the next couple months, if you can attend in May, we'd love to hear about it because uh, we'll everybody because everybody was posting all their tools that they use. I'd like to hear what everybody has. We can get a good group of plugins and things to try. Yeah, look, I mean, I had the, the first paint content, the first content paint was in 4.1 and it came down to 1.0. Yeah, that's good. Can I throw so, in a comment real quick? Yeah, go I ahead, Jay. Guys with that, that's, that's, a, beautiful, uh, uh, that's a, a beautiful secret that I had. Thank you, uh, Oscar. Yeah, we appreciate it. Jay? Yeah, is it? I studied is a lot it? of videos from our last meeting um, about the plugin that we talked about, uh, you know, the WP Racket, because it gives some real detailed recommendations as to why the site's slow. And then you can Google those, and there's guys with videos that show exactly what to do. And a lot of it was this Java, and you, you can delay the Java. And I, I bet you what Nitro does is this, those same things effectively. Because that's what gives you the speed that you delay the Java loading until later. And uh, as soon as I did that, and it was a little bit tricky through, uh, you know, the plugin to do that because rank, um, not rank math, but uh, WP Rockets intricate, you know, there's a lot of settings to learn. So, but when I got it right, uh, instantly, I, I'm at 100%, my loading time is 0.5 seconds, but I don't have a lot on the page, but same results as what Oscar had. I'm just letting you know, I, I think regardless of what plugin you're using, the, the core reason is the Java. Mm -hmm. Okay. This does a lot of things. This does minifying. Uh, I mean, I, uh, I just discovered it, so I haven't really studied it, but I've tried it in, in several websites and the results are amazing. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Oscar. Appreciate you sharing that. Hey, but share more of it. This went up a whole grade using it. <laughs> mm -hmm. What? I went from E to D with that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on up. All right, does anybody have any other questions for Tyler before we wrap up? 
think we got everything from the list. D's get degrees, you know, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good deal. I'm going to just share a couple slides here to show you what's up and coming. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. Yep. All right, next month, we have uh, an exciting presentation. Uh, our very own Maureen Roberts will be going over accessibility. So also very important to SEO is accessibility. Google watches that too. Um, so she will be going through uh, what is accessibility and how you can use it with Elementor. So definitely, definitely be here for that. We will be meeting on a different Wednesday uh, because the second Wednesday of the month uh, is my fiance's birthday. And then it's also Maureen's husband's birthday, ironically. So we decided that we'd be doing April 7th for our next one. So we got three weeks or so, a little less than a month. I'll post everything out in the Slack group and out on Meetup. Also, Carlos is coming back, but he won't be in the Chicago Meetup. We will actually be, him and I are starting a regional Meetup for Elementor. Uh, we're leading the marketing one. And we'll tentatively be meeting on Tuesdays once a month in the afternoon. So make sure to join on April 13th. I'll send all the details out. We'll be getting that meetup set up and we will be going through lead generation funnels. If you were here last time Carlos was with us, you'll know that he had some golden nuggets beyond belief uh, to help with everyone with you know getting some more leads and everything else. Uh, so you won't wanna miss this. Make sure to attend. I'll send all the details out soon for both Maureen's presentation and for Carlos. Okay. I cannot recommend more Carlos. I mean, he's uh, he, we're good friends. He lives a couple of blocks away from him from my house, but he's excellent. He's yeah. very good. So recommended. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Um, if there's no other questions, make sure to join the Slack group. Um, let me post it out there again, real quick. Where did it go? Hope I have it. So, Michael, from where can we get the recordings for this session? Um, I will post it either in Slack or I'll post it on Meetup uh, in the comments. Uh, there's a YouTube channel. Uh, you can join the Slack group with that link right there. It's a Google form that just uh, confirms that you want to join, gives me your email address so I can add you. And then the yeah. YouTube channel, I'm trying to find it here. I might have it on our screen. Like I don't have enough monitors. Um, I think I lost it. Where did it go? Here, hold on. I'll find the uh, the channel here so that you can grab it. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to post the the link to the last meetup that we had on Google Analytics. So there's a playlist on there for Chicago Elementor. There's also all the other some of the other meetups that do Elementor. They're posting all the replays out there. So keep uh, follow that channel. That way you'll get the replay out there too. Uh, Tyler went through a lot. I'm going to go back and watch it and uh, take some more notes because there's a lot to do. That Microsoft Clarity is my first order of business. I, yeah, that is game changing. Totally mm -hmm. sick. Totally sick. Clarity's sick. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me, Mike. I yeah, Tyler, that. thanks so much, man. Awesome job. Your websites look great. Um, really appreciate you sharing everything today with us. Yeah. Well, I've learned everything for free on the internet, so I just feel like it's my duty to share with everyone now. Absolutely. Um, Tyler, if you don't mind, can I, I can I ask the last question? Yeah, go right ahead. So that uh, Microsoft, uh, what is it called? Um, Clarity. Microsoft Clarity. So is that a free tool or is a, is it a paid tool? Free tool. I am a huge proponent of free things on the internet. So everything that I've shared is free. Um, HubSpot included. Everything that I use is free. Uh, you can visit my website, dos-m.com, and I have a, a page specifically about free resources that I specifically use. Um, some of the other cool ones are like Calendly or Zapier. Like there's so much free tools on the internet to help you manage your business better and get a better user experience. So I'm a huge okay. proponent of free web tools. Can I consider you? You don't need to pay. You don't to get it for free. Yeah. What was that? Can I consider you a tool so I hire you and get it for free? <laughs> hey, my discovery calls are free. So feel free to schedule a time and I am more than happy to help. Like I love being a resource for people. I tell them all my clients, like I'm your go-to digital guy. Just schedule a time, I'll help you out. And then if I have to charge you, I'll send you an invoice. 
and the, and the other thing that he was saying uh, about Calendly, don't make the mistake I did. You can use it for free and get a lot done with it. Uh, I ended up thinking like I had to pay for the pro version. So I'm paying like $200 for the pro version and I didn't really need it. And and he's, he's spot on when he says free. The only thing that I, I um, use differently than the, the only thing that I don't use that, uh, that he uses that I pay for is I use the uh, Rank Math Pro version. Um, but but the rank math free version is better than the Yoast pro version. Uh, and I paid yes. for the Yoast pro version for a long time. So rank math is great. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, I guess it's easier than Yoast. Yeah. yeah. It, the, the guides that I give you are definitely easier than Yoast. The By only far. problem I have that I like more about Yoast is how it would highlight specific things that you were yeah, doing incorrectly. Yeah, like the passive voice and the stuff like that. It, it I always, love that. I love I that. Too. That but was you the, couldn't get it on the actual page. Have you yeah. guys heard of Grammarly? Grammarly is a good tool for that. Grammarly. I use yes. Grammarly. I use Grammarly. And I, of course, I have the pro version of that too, because I can use it for on everything. I use it like crazy. Um, and I also have pro writer, pro writing aid, which is real more for like if you're writing a book. But um, I use both, and both give me phenomenal um, recommendations for that. But but the coolest part about it, like, like so, sometimes, um, uh, rank math will say you have a paragraph that's too long. Well, I don't have, I don't see a paragraph. Yeah, I don't long. know what paragraph it is. I'm over right, there. It doesn't look like anywhere too long. Time. Right, right. <laughs> so, so when that happens, what I've ha what I've done is I've just taken um, sections, text sections. Like if I have one text section that's long, even though there's paragraph breaks in it, uh, yeah. I'll just break it into different sections. You know, like use the widget, drag it over, break it into sections, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden that that error goes away. So, yeah. I, I I don't know if that's a, a, a a problem with the way Elementor and those widgets interact. I don't really know, but it, but that's a little good. What is, uh, into. What is Rank Math's pricing strategy? Because uh, I know Yoast, you have to get separate licenses for each site. Is Rank Math similar? If you do the pro version, do you have Rank to get Math? Once you buy, once you buy for pro, um, you have unlimited uh, sites. At least oh, when oh, I bought it, it did. I bought personal it it websites. That's their yeah. trick now. Is they have pricing for individuals where you get unlimited personal websites and then they have pricing for businesses where you get unlimited website for client websites oh well i just bought it when it was unlimited for everybody like i you, you got in early yes I, all, this <laughs> stuff, all this stuff i got to do really early so that's like, what i don't like know. about yoast is that i have to buy a new license for every if i want yeah to it was a big pain and it was like 40 bucks or something a person or something so i i just said i went with like i said rank math i got this unlimited thing and when i sign up i just attach it to you know you just go in there and connect to my uh, my rank math account. And it's even like Elementor Pro, you know, I bought it the, um, the unlimited before now they're making all these changes where it's going to be stupid, you know, pricing like, you know, a thousand bucks or something like that. Um, so I, I don't have any of that problem because I bought it all years ago, you know, so well, I hey, rank math pro for unlimited sites is 200 a year. That's pretty good. 200 per year. It's so reasonable, I guess. Yeah, well, rank math. So there you go. Two hundred bucks is about what I, th I think. That's the yeah, version. It's, a, it's, a, it's a reasonable. Yeah, Yoast is about eighty a site or something like that. Yeah, well, it was it was forty a long time ago. It might be eighty now, but yeah. So I mean, <clears throat> I have like twenty sites on that I maintain, right? So the rank math is great for me. I just have it all attached to it, and I, and and the only thing that you got to watch for is it installs the Google code for you, right? The tracking code for you. So you have to be careful if you're going to use. Uh, the Google tracking code in the custom code, or you have to turn it off. Yes, that's why I was talking so much about making sure that your data is correct because that's the most common thing I see. Someone has it where it's something like that, then they oh, do I've the custom that. thing. Yeah. And like, they're like, I'm getting a 0% bounce rate. I'm like, nope, your analytics code is just- installed. Yeah, right. That, yeah. That's, you're not getting a site that has a 0% bounce rate. If you were, I'd, I'd be talking to you about web right, right. Like Right, right. You're, you're, the, you're the best out there if that's what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Phenomenal at your job, you know? Yeah, but, uh, and I've had things get installed twice, but I go, but, it's, it's worked out okay for me because I guess it was the same tracking code or whatever. And it just was all right. Right. But I mean, I've since made those changes. This was in the past 10 years, but I mean, um, I, for me, rank math is just so easy to set right up and it allows me all the redirects. I mean, you know, I don't have the redirection pro, uh, plugin anymore. I don't have to worry yes. about anything. You know, I can set it all up. I can look at it in, in rank math in, wow. in, you know, right within the dashboard and, I mean, you know, I used to have Yoast, Monster Analytics, you know, you name it, everything was in there. And it was just like a lot of crap. And like, 
you know, we've talked before you and I specifically about not having so many damn plugins, you know? Yeah. And I'm so excited about this new thing you guys showed me. I'm going to go from 10 plugins to like five. That is true. I use, I use about six, I use about six plugins for. Yeah. Uh, it's like, mm. it's all you need. Anything more than 10. It's just like, Oh, well, that depends. Man. I mean, you could get, it depends on what it. you're doing, but I mean, if you have WooCommerce, you might going to have more yeah. than that. True. Um, all those integrations. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think that probably over 30 is too much. Right. Yes. I mean, honest to God, if you, if you can, you can, most of the sites that I, I do or that I work on, um, you know, I'll have a certain plugin because it uses a certain thing. Like, you know, you have that power pack pro or whatever we talked about, you know, in, around Christmas time or whatever. Okay. Yep. Well, I have under, I have the unlimited elements. I have the, um, the pilot pilot net and I have like another one package, right. That I have the pro versions of, and I have them on there, but I turn off everything, but the little aspect I, that I mm, want, yeah, one right? thing that you need. Um, that and one, so yeah, in my case, that. you know, I, I, I would surprise you because I'm an anti-plugin guy, but I would surprise you if I showed you my plugins, right? You'd say, like, oh, shit, you said you're an anti-plugin guy, but you got like 30 of them, right? But it's because and this one allows me to do like, you know, uh, for instance, just to pick the top of my head, like gradated fonts, um, you know, gradient on a font color. Not yep. that I'm using it, but it's just one to pop it in my head. Like, you know, one of the plugin things allows me to do that, right? And so, and the other one will allow me to do like, format a form a little bit better than the other one does so i just take this one off and put that one on and and so that's why i have them but it's just because i don't feel like coding the stuff right yes. like i mean i can code the stuff because you know i'm old school right i mean i was building this stuff with html css raw you know and you know php raw so and everything was faster then because it was right there you know but now with the plugins i can do it faster right so it's yeah, one of those things where out. you know it's um what do you call it uh you know, um, you know, when you, when you, uh, you know, the, you pay to, you, you, the cost of, uh, do, um, I don't know the, 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 Oh um, yeah. Like opportunity costs or whatever. Yeah. You know, know, and, what and, you know how much, how much are you willing to pay for the convenience, you know, the, 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 and, and versus like how much problematic it is, you know, like how much more actual speed does it, or, you know, how much more time to load does it really take if you have this money versus this money? It's that, that balancing act. Yeah, That's what right. your, your job is constantly just balancing what's most important and where do you prioritize. Right. Things. And I got really fast at, 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 at uh, making page speed really good with W3. And then all of a sudden that started getting stupid and wasn't behaving right. And I moved out of W3 and started using WP Optimize. And, I, and all of a sudden I'm getting better. Yeah, I'm getting better scores, right? So it's, it's one of those things where things were getting screwed up. And then if you get too deep into them, sometimes you can break. I mean, I've seen people use rank math at my recommendation. I feel really bad they did it. And then there's site breaks, you know, cause like they click too much stuff or they don't know what they're really doing and they go with the pro version. Yeah, I might need your guys' math. feedback. I'm looking at rank math right now. It's, <laughs> you know, they got that limited time price. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like hmm, 200 versus 429 a year. Mm. Right. I mean, I'm telling you rank math. I, I the free version is great. It, I think it. I think it beats the Yoast. Uh, Personally, Pro. I'm a fan of the free. I'm not going to pay any time. Well, soon. I mean, I'm telling you, brother. I, <laughs> I agree with you. I used that free forever, and the only reason why I went with the Pro is because it allowed me to incorporate the Google, and I didn't, and I could get rid of Monster Analytics that I was paying per site to run. You know, like some stupid thing, and yeah. and it allowed me just to do more stuff right in the. You know, if if the, the pro version, if I if I like the free version, I use it all the time. I don't mind giving them the bucks. Right? I mean, admittedly, the second I get a client that would be like a big SEO project client, I would probably justify the cost of having a plugin like that. It thanks for like most of my clients. With the business right. one, you can do a hundred clients. It says for the for two hundred a year. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. that's and the thing. Most of my clients are into in like PPC. Like it's a really oh, hard a sell. Be like you won't see results until a year from now. So they most of them go like instantaneous route. Yeah, absolutely. The PPC guys, you know, like uh, me too. Uh, you know, the in California, the bartending schools are not. We're not. They're not regulated, right? So, so for me, the, the, the guy isn't paying. The guy isn't doesn't have a three thousand uh, dollar Google Ads budget. Then it's probably not. Doesn't matter. Like doesn't matter what I do. Right, because yeah. the person that pays a hundred dollars to advertise is going to beat them, right? Yeah. So, so, so they have to pay the money, 
and there's no regulation in the schooling. So, you know, for us to win out here in the Alien Empire, which we've done, it's because my guy spent the 3000. I built a visually aesthetically pleasing website that, you know, gives the kids all the stuff they want to know about becoming a bartender and makes it sound like it's really glamorous. And we win. Right. So that's that's how it goes. You know, we have a nice, nice form and it comes up on a pop up and, you know, we have lead conversions and we get, you know, 10 you know, five to 10 leads a day and we convert about 30%. So we're doing great. You know, I mean, it's yeah. perfect. Yeah. I'm also a big fan of uh, freebies. I mean, what? the only yeah. one, the, the only one I pay for is elemental. That's the only, yeah. Pro yeah. that's the only pay. thing I think I have in like my toolkit. Locked other in. Than power pack. locked in 150 a year. We're locked in guys. Yes. I know. That's the beauty of it is like, I'm staying with them for a while. I, I had know. a, sales call with Wix. They were trying to get me to become like their affiliate and they're asking me to pay them $400 a month to get like 10 whatever codes for no Wix. And I was way. like, no, dude, I, I I got this elementor pricing that I'm locked in. I'm, I'm set. Like, I don't, I don't need a Wix editor X discount. No, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> I was very concerned about performance of elementor, but after Nitro pack, uh, I mean, you're happy now, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, back. yeah, get back in the group. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. yeah, it was very important to find that. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. try it later. I mean, my, my, my guy, in, my guy in Thailand is already trying it. He was in the meeting earlier. Uh, he, he looks like he's dropped out. Oh, no, he's still here. He's still down there. Michael Slater, Mike Slater, anyway. Uh, he, he's already done it and he's like loving it. He's already, he's already started with the custom uh codes too on, on uh. The Siam EDU site. So yeah, we're, everything's going great for us. We're already doing everything. We're, we already learned stuff and already starting to put it into a, a play here over on our side. So it's been a great, great, uh, this was a good meetup, Tyler. You did a good job. Yeah, nice job. I appreciate it. Yeah, guys. Yeah, well, yeah, I knew you were good. I knew you were going to do good, bro. So you know, when, good. when is the, when is the, the, the video going to be available? I need to see that, but in slow motion. Oh, he does it soon, <laughs> right? Uh, I, it'll, be, it'll be exported tonight while i'm sleeping and then tomorrow morning i'll load it up <laughs> yeah right oscar are you in our slack channel no i'm not okay well if you jump in the slack channel it'll be out there if not just watch out on the meetup i'll post on the comments out there okay okay great seeing you see you next uh yeah bye thanks bye. everybody bye, bye. Thank everyone bye, bye. thanks yeah, great job, Tyler. Thanks, have a good night Tyler, thank you very much Tyler. Great, great, great knowledge. Yep, brilliant. Yep, it was very great. It was important information that, that we shared today. Hey, uh, Kelvin, if you uh, see this link out there, you said you didn't get the invite, just click that link right there and you can request to be added. So once you request, I'll add you out there. Kelvin, if you can hear me. Oh, you did fill it out right. I'll, I have to send it afterwards. <laughs> give, me, give me a second, I'll, I'll get it out to you. Thanks. All right, thanks guys, have a good one. Later.